Today, we are going to study structure of chromosomes, cell cycle and cell division. Let us have a look at the first slide in which we can clearly see the structure of a nucleus. It is surrounded by a double layered nuclear membrane with nuclear pores. The ground substance of the nucleus is a semi-solid substance nucleoplasm containing one or more round shaped nuclei. The nucleoplasm contains a network of dark colored fibers called chromatin fibers. These chromatin fibers condense into short thick chromosomes during cell division. When a normal unstained living cell is observed under a light microscope, its nucleus may not appear to contain any particular thing inside. But when the same cell is stained with suitable dyes, several structures become noticeable in the nucleus. In all probability, you may be looking at a non-dividing stage of the cell called as interface. In the interface, the nucleus shows a network of very long, extremely thin, dark staining fibers called chromatin fibers. As the cell begins to enter the first stage of cell division, called as prophase, the chromatin fibers condense to form chromosomes. And the chromosomes readily pick up certain dyes and get colored, hence the name chromosomes, where chroma means colored and soma means body. In the second slide, we can see the structure of chromosomes. Each chromosome in its condensed form as visible during the start of cell division consists of two chromatids joined at some point along the length. These chromatids are called as sister chromatids. This point of attachment is called centromere and it appears as a small constricted region. The centromere also serves to attach to the spindle fiber during cell division. And it is very interesting to note over here that each chromosome centromere is located at a particular site. As the spindle fiber contracts, the sister chromatids are separated at the centromere and each is pulled away from the other towards the two poles of the dividing cell. After the completion of cell division, the chromatids, now called chromosomes, decondense and they revert back to their very long and fine thread-like chromatin fibers. There would be as many chromatin fibers inside the nucleus as the number of chromosomes that appear during cell division. This slide which we are seeing as slide number 3, it is showing a highly diagrammatic representation of the structure of chromatin fibers showing the sequentially enlarged view of the DNA strand. The chromatin material that constitutes the fiber is formed of two substances, DNA which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid which is about 40% and histones which is a particular type of protein about 60 percent. The DNA strand winds around a core of eight histone molecules and this core can be imagined like a football around which a long rope is wound with one or two loops which is very clearly seen in the diagram and each such complex is called as a nucleosome. The entire chromatin fiber is coiled and super coiled Something like the coils and supercoils we see in a typical telephone cord. In this slide, you can very clearly see the DNA strand which is wound around a core of 8 histone molecules. Now coming over to the structure of DNA. The shape of DNA molecule was studied by Rosalind Franklin in 1953. And DNA is considered to be a very large single molecule. That is why the name macromolecule has been given to it. As you can see in the picture, it is composed of two complementary strands which are wound around each other in a double helix. You can see a ladder-like arrangement in the given figure. Now we have the basic structure of a nucleotide. Each single DNA strand is composed of repeating nucleotides. And a nucleotide is made up of three components, phosphate, sugar, pentose arranged lengthwise and a nitrogenous base attached to the sugar inwards, which you can see in the diagram. It extends to join by a hydrogen bond, the complementary nitrogenous base from the other strand. So the two strands together, they make a ladder-like arrangement with the nitrogenous bases forming the rungs of the ladder. 
The bases are ATCG, which is adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. Adenine always pairs with thymine AT with two hydrogen bonds and guanine will always pair with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. Here you can see replication of DNA taking place during the interphase of cell cycle also called as the resting phase. Each DNA molecule duplicates in readiness for their equal distribution in the two daughter cells formed at the end of the mitotic cell division. For replication the DNA double helix opens at one end which is clearly seen in the diagram making the two strands free to which new strands begin to form and the process continues in a sequence for the whole length of the DNA. The entire replication is a very very complex process. Now genes are specific sequence of nucleotides on a chromosome that encode particular proteins which express in the form of some particular feature of the body. Now the question is that why new cells need to be produced? So over here we are going to focus on four main points that is growth, replacement, repair and reproduction. When we talk of cell division, there are two types of cell division namely mitosis and meiosis. When we say mitosis, so that is a cell division which leads to growth and development. Every organism, be it a plant or an animal, begins its life as a single cell. This cell divides repeatedly to form a cluster of cells which start shaping for different functions to form tissues and organs. Thus cell division is very very essential for growth. Now coming to meiosis, reproduction also takes place through the activity of the dividing cells. In uh, humans, special cells in the reproductive organs undergo a special kind of cell division meiosis to produce sperms and eggs. And it is very interesting to note that the sperms and eggs receive only half the number of chromosomes of their parent cell that is one chromosome from each pair. And this reduction in chromosome number is very very significant. Mitosis is the cell division in which one parent cell divides into two identical daughter cells. And the most important aspect of mitosis is that the same number of chromosome is maintained at each cell division. Just before the division of the cell, the nucleus prepares for the change and doubles the quantity of DNA which we have already discussed is known as interphase. In this phase, also known as the resting phase, no change in chromosomes is visible externally but actually it is quite active in synthesizing the DNA. There are phases of mitosis which is completed in two main steps karyokinesis and cytokinesis. Karyokinesis involves four main phases which can be very easily learned by the acronym PMAT that is prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Now we shall see all the stages of mitosis one by one. So let us first see interphase in the diagram which is clearly depicting interphase taking place in animal cell and plant cell. You can see that there is no visible change in chromosomes. Why? Because this is a resting phase and the nucleus is very actively synthesizing DNA at this point of time. Coming over to the next phase that is early prophase and late prophase. Let us have a look at the stage early prophase. We can see that the centrioles, they have started moving apart and they are reaching the opposite poles. Chromosomes have become thick, short and distinct. They have duplicated as paired chromatids, also known as sister chromatids. Then the sister chromatids I have attached at a small constricted region called as the centromere. Whereas in the late prophase we can see that spindle fibers have started appearing between the daughter centrioles forming the achromatic spindle and the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus has disappeared now. In late prophase we saw that spindle fibers had started appearing between the daughter centrioles now in metaphase, each chromosome gets attached to the spindle by its centromere. 
and the chromosomes line up in one plane at equator. This is the most important or the characteristic feature of the phase metaphase. The next phase is anaphase, that is early anaphase and late anaphase. In the early anaphase, we can see that the centromeres attaching the two chromatids, they are splitting or dividing. And the two sister chromatids of each chromosome are separating and are drawn apart towards the opposite poles, pulled by shortening of the spindle fibers. It can be visualized that when the spindle fibers are going to shorten, obviously the uh, chromosomes will be drawn apart towards the opposite poles. And in late anaphase, we can see that a furrow or a ridge starts in the cell membrane at the middle in the animal cell. Now the stage telophase in which we can see that two sets of daughter chromosomes, they have reached the opposite poles. The spindle fibers have disappeared. The chromatids have now again thinned out in the form of chromatin fibers. Nuclear membrane has reformed and the cleavage furrow has started deepening in the animal cell because they are ultimately going to divide in two daughter cells and the nucleoli has reappeared. Finally, you can see that cytokinesis, that is the division of cytoplasm, has taken place. The cleavage furrow deepens totally in animal cell and separates the two daughter cells independently. Now here we have differences between mitosis in animal and plant cell. So we, have, we can very clearly see in the diagram that asters are formed only in animal cell, whereas plant cells, asters are not formed because there are no centrosomes. Then we come to cytokinesis, which is taking place in animal cell by furrowing of cytoplasm or formation of a cleavage. Whereas in plants, cytokinesis is taking place by cell plate formation. Then in animal cells, it is mainly concerned with growth and replacement. So it occurs in most of the tissues throughout the body. Whereas in plants, it occurs at the growing tips for lengthening of the plant and for sites that is for increase in thickness or girth. 